Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a viewer request topic, and it's going to be a channeled love letter from your future spouse. So there are three groups to choose from, group one, group two, and group three. If you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing, and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups, or perhaps all of the groups that you're most drawn to, I'll give you a minute to make your selection, and then we'll get right into it. And there are timestamps in the description box of the video if you would like to jump ahead. Hi group one. So this is your channeled love letter that I will go ahead and read in just a minute. I'm going to start off with some tarot um, to get kind of some clues about who this person is. This could be somebody that is currently in your life, somebody that you already know, maybe you're already seeing, or this could be somebody new that's coming um, in your future on the horizon perhaps. So let me see a little bit more information about future or group one's future spouse clues about who they are, kind of the circumstances of how you'll meet this person maybe. Okay, so we have the Empress, Four of Swords, King of Cups, Judgment, Queen of Swords, King of Wands, Nine of Cups, and the Sun. So right away with the judgment card, this could be somebody from your past, somebody that you um, were previously in a relationship with, or even somebody that you knew, maybe from childhood or from kind of an earlier period in your life where you either have gone into separation with this person, um, with the Four of Swords, you could be kind of taking a break from one another, the connection could be on pause, on hold, um, or there's been a disconnect altogether. Maybe just life took you both in different directions, and so this could be somebody who um, you're kind of running into again. Um, maybe somebody who looks you up online, kind of reaches out, re-emerges from your past. Um, if this is not somebody from your past, then this definitely can talk about um, a past life relationship. Um, somebody that you've had many lifetimes together with and you are coming back around to each other um, at this point in time after a series of lessons have been learned, some growth has taken place and through that personal evolution, the evolution in the emotional space with this King of Cups here, uh, maybe some difficulties in love that you've had to transcend individually some heartbreaks of the past that you've had to really get over and learning to um, opening your heart to love again, learning to trust and love again, kind of leading with that optimism and that certainty that despite what you've been through in the past with this Nine of Cups and the Sun here, um, that joy and satisfaction and wish fulfillment in the area of love um, is on the horizon for you. With this King of Wands, this can talk about somebody who um, is very passionate, um, maybe very passionate in general, somebody who's very animated in terms of their speech, 
um, things that really excite them, that really kind of light them up inside. You two could share a lot of similar interests as well, um, causes that you're bo both very passionate about, um, or kind of areas, things that you've worked on within yourself, maybe having some boundaries, kind of working on your self-esteem, taking your power back from situations that had really kind of left you at a period of loss, um, and really kind of stepping into that best version of self, having that glow up. Um, this feels very much like a mutual energy that you're both meeting each other at this, this very mature level um, through a lot of personal growth and evolution having taken place. With the Empress here, this can definitely, if you are a Divine Masculine watching this um, reading, this can resonate as um, your future spouse being your Divine Feminine, so maybe a twin flame or even a soulmate that you've been in separation from, um, and some growth and evolution that has taken place internally that has then really um, manifested in the ability to have a more successful connection together um, going forward in the future. Um, this can also really talk about, again, this kind of energy of nurturing and of abundance, um, kind of that energy of self-love, both of you really having um, taken the time, whether this is someone from your past or a new person that's coming in, to um, kind of tend to your own garden, tend to your own needs, really realize your worth, step into that, establish firm boundaries, um, and get very clear on your expectations of what you want in love. With the Queen of Swords, this can talk about um, a period of release and um, kind of things falling away or, or other relationships being kind of cut away from your life as a prelude to this person coming in, um, kind of this metamorphosis with these doves here on this card, maybe a period of chaos and turmoil in your life kind of giving way to um, a space of peace, coming into a place of peace within yourself um, with where you, what you've been through in your life, the journey up to this point. Um, again, really stepping into that, that knowledge of self, that empowerment of self, um, raising those standards, raising your vibration, no longer entertaining energies or individuals or circumstances that in any way really make you question your worth or make you feel that you are in some way unworthy of love. Um, this can also really, with this Queen of Swords, this can speak to um, an intellectual compatibility that you have with this person, that not only is there a deep passion and attraction, but this is somebody that um, you enjoy talking to, you enjoy exchanging ideas with. Um, this is somebody who can be looked at as a confidant as well, somebody who um, very much in a mutual energy, you are seeking each other's opinions out, you're valuing each other's opinions. Um, this person really seeing you as very wise, and um, you also seeing this person is very wise, particularly, again, that knowledge of self, a lot of shadow work that might have been um, done in order to get into a place of um, not allowing emotions to kind of overwhelm you or to carry you in a low vibrational manner, um, but really understanding maybe some triggers within yourselves um, and getting to this place where you are able to express emotions in a healthy manner. Um, you're able to kind of have an outlet for these things, maybe some kind of a creative outlet. But this King of Wands can also speak to a creative person, and if you yourself are creative. Um, this can really indicate uh, some kind of a connection there with that, um, where the two of you really um, kind of acting as a muse, operating as a muse for each other, or while in the pursuit of these passions or these creativities, that in some way this is how your life intersects with one another. This is how you cross paths with the sun here and also the nine of cups this speaks to um, a very happy and fulfilling relationship with this person um, kind of like this energy of the happily ever after that if you as you've kind of traversed through the darkness and through disappointments this person comes in and sort of um, reinvigorates your heart reinvigorates your belief in love um, and really proves to you that 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 satisfaction and that wish fulfillment it is attainable it is within reach um, somebody who really helps to kind of light up your life again um, um, to kind of, again, with that judgment card, sort of breathe life back into either a connection um, from your past, or if you have gone through this period of kind of change and metamorphosis within yourself, then this person is almost that light at the end of the tunnel, kind of that signal or that reward that this work that you've done on yourself with the Four of Swords, the time you may have taken apart um, from this person, if it's someone from your past, or maybe you've gone through a period of um, kind of celibacy, if you, um, you know, not dating other people, just just focusing on yourself, focusing on working on yourself, kind of transcending some issues, focusing on your own personal abundance and happiness, not really seeking that from outside yourself, but finding that and cultivating that within. 
that this person really comes in as, as kind of that example or that reward of having raised your vibration. And then you're able to magnetize somebody in that's able, has done this work on themselves as well and is able to meet you at this mature level, at this very um, equitable level in terms of your needs, wants, desires, and ability to express love to one another. Um, with these two kings here as well, this can really talk about um, somebody who kind of their love language is declarations of love, um, displays of affection, um, touch, hugs, kisses. These can all be um, somebody who is very much um, desiring of closeness. If you had been dealing with partners in the past who maybe shied away from affection or you know just didn't really get into kind of the, the depths of emotional expression, then this person almost seems like a breath of fresh air in that capacity. Somebody who makes you feel really seen, appreciated, um, and loved. Somebody who's who's willing and able to um, meet you at a space and within this connection of building toward nurturing and kind of protecting the, the seeds that are planted between the both of you to help that relationship to grow over time into something that's very prosperous and fulfilling. So in terms of signs with the Empress, we have Taurus and Libra. Swords is air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. With the wands, we have fire energy, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The cups is water, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. Judgment is Scorpio, and the sun is Leo. So I'm going to get um, a few of these little attributes cards here just for some other kind of hints or clues about who this future spouse might be. Maybe some initials could come up. Um, there's zodiac signs in here just a little bit of everything. So we have dancing. Um, so this could be an activity that the two of you enjoy together. Maybe this is some kind of an artistic form of expression that really bonds the two of you. Um, these intimate times, these close times that you share. And we've got slim slender. So this can definitely be a body type, but this also for me ties in with this queen of swords. Um, this person really coming in after a period of kind of cutting things away, um, cutting away from belief systems or even views that you had about yourself and love. And we have studious. Um, so somebody who has really taken the time to seek to know themselves, to learn about themselves, somebody who could be quite intellectual, maybe somebody who is a student, a student of life, or in some ways maybe gone back to school, you've gone back to school, this can be another way of intersecting with this person. And we have politics, so that can tie in with that energy of passion um, and somebody who's very um, opinionated, very conscientious of kind of worldly affairs as well. This can also indicate somebody who is maybe international, lives at a distance from you, um, maybe while you know involved with something to do with politics, some kind of a rally, some kind of volunteer work, um, or just in some capacity with that, this is how you intersect with this person. And we have email, so more of that energy maybe of being at a distance at first where a lot of your relationships Relationship, this connection is really built um, through an exchange in, in kind of the virtual sense back and forth, getting to know each other in that sense. And we have October, so that can be a significant month um, to this connection. That's also the energy of autumn, um, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. So kind of that, that sense of cutting away, things falling away, um, a big period of change or a shift in your life that is kind of the precursor to this person coming in. This can also really tie into the zodiac signs of Virgo and Libra, or I'm sorry, Libra and Scorpio, excuse me. And let's see, we have November. Okay, so more of that autumn energy here, at least for the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and for the Southern Hemisphere, that would be spring. So that definitely ties in kind of this person coming in as this energy of the rebirth that we see here with the judgment card. Um, kind of that, that new growth, that new love, that new life that comes after a period of cutting things away. Um, this can also really tie in with the zodiac signs of Scorpio and Sagittarius. So I see. We also have Earth signs, so Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. That can also really talk about somebody who is very grounded, um, very knowledgeable about self, very confident um, in what they want moving forward in their life and in love. And we have jewelry, so they could um, wear some kind of a piece of jewelry that's very significant. Maybe this has to do with the artistic energy that was coming through. You or they could make jewelry, um, maybe in some, and you sell that, and in some capacity they um, they are able to connect with you in that form, um, kind of admiring your work, purchasing something for from you, a gift for themselves, a gift for others. This also really um, is this energy of somebody who cherishes the connection, who recognizes your value and your worth, and that can come as kind of this breath of fresh air from people you may have been dealing with previously, um, or even kind of a, a previous ideation of this person where they weren't able to really um, see and value um, and appreciate the 
kind of the the intangible wealth that this connection or this type of love, this intensity of love, this doorway to love has to offer. And we have actors, so that could be something that this person does as a hobby. Um, maybe they're in theater or even in the movies. Um, they could do that as a profession. You both could enjoy watching movies, um, discussing movies. You got a similar taste in film. And we've got curly hair as an attribute. Kundalini awakening. So that kind of ties in with that energy of the King of Wands and really this passion, this intensity of the connection between the both of you. Um, that You could experience that with this person. If you've been on an ascension journey, this person really kind of signaling that next level, that next kind of activation, kind of the next step up in that process. And we also have psychology. Um, so that could be this person's major. Um, they could be a therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist as a profession. And this also really talks about um, somebody who has sought to know themselves, who has really kind of done that shadow work, has, has dived deep into the subconscious to kind of um, pick out their triggers to heal any subconscious wounding. Um, somebody who has really been on this kind of journey um, to self-improvement and self-knowledge and self-love. And we also have Sagittarius, so that can be um, a significant zodiac sign, or this can relate to the months of November and December as significant to this connection. And we also have clever, so that kind of ties in with that studious energy, somebody who is quick-witted, who's intelligent, um, somebody who you have a lot of really good discussions with. And we've got adventurous, so this person could really um, kind of spark your, this reawakening of this zest for life that you, that you have. The two of you could really also be um, kind of entering into this new realm as far as the experience of love and partnership um, and kind of connectedness with another on that deep level to where it's an adventure, it's new territory for the both of you. And we have meditation, so somebody who could um, have kind of a spiritually based mindset, somebody who, um, kind of in that journey to self-mastery, one of the sort of methods that they may have really um, come across that is working for them is meditation. Somebody who's also very introspective, um, really seeks to to know themselves, to, to do that active shadow work. Um, this can also be something, um, an activity that you do together, or maybe you meet them in some kind of capacity with like an online meditation um, or some kind of a, an in-person, like a group meditation that you participate in. And we have genuine, so somebody who um, is very direct. What you see is what you get with this person. And this also really talks about, um, you know, that this is real love. This is a true connection. You may have dealt with people in the past who kind of used those honeyed words and had very little follow through in terms of action. Or you might have been dealing with some lower vibrational or kind of deceitful energies that could have caused you to sort of close off to love, kind of take that time to journey within, um, to heal some wounds within yourself that may have kind of attracted um, or allowed those kind of that vibration within your life. And so when this person comes, there could be a little bit of hesitancy on your part to, to really open up, maybe feeling, are you ready? Is this, you know, not necessarily wanting to open yourself up to being hurt again in love. Um, but this person really coming through even energetically as, as just very direct and sincere that this is something that helps to kind of break those walls down and allow you to, to open up to experience this. And we have retail, so that's kind of fitting in with um, that jewelry card that came out. Um, you could sell, make and sell jewelry. This person could make and sell jewelry. The two of you could um, uh, open some kind of a, an, a business or endeavor together. And we have chef, so somebody who might like to cook, might be really good in the kitchen. Um, maybe they own a restaurant or, or in the process of opening a restaurant. And we also have July, so a significant month, or this can tie in with the zodiac signs of Cancer and Libra, or I'm sorry, Cancer and Leo, excuse me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read your channeled love letter from your sp future spouse now, group one, and let's see what they have to say from their higher self. The first time I laid eyes on you, I knew you were the one. I never could quite put my finger on what I was searching for that I could never find as I looked for love around the world. I had been broken down and betrayed by my own heart, leaning in too quickly so many times. I closed myself off, set my sights on other horizons, and sought to build for myself all that external richness I could not for all of my efforts attain within. 
I know now that I had been looking in the wrong direction, that what I had hoped to find had been right in front of me all along. You have awakened something in me, and I know as the days unfold between us that the best is yet to come. You give me sanctuary and a sense of purpose. I am driven and infused by your love in all ways. I look forward to the change of seasons in our life together and am confident in our ability to overcome whatever obstacles may come. I had given up on love. You resurrected me. I hope to never have you dwelling in the least bit of doubt about my utter and unwavering commitment to encourage and nurture our bond without bounds. So I'm going to close this reading for you. Group one, some initials. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it can spell something out. So whatever resonates for you. So we have U, F, P, L, X, O, H, M, D, Q and V. So those are your messages and that is your channeled love letter, group one. I hope that the messages resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading or a personalized channeled love letter, I offer both through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi, group two. So this is your channeled love letter from your future spouse, which I will read in just a minute. I'm gonna start with some tarot to get some clues about who this person is. This could be somebody that you are currently seeing, that you currently know, maybe someone from your past or somebody new that is on the horizon that is coming in for you. So some clues about 
Group two's future spouse. So we have the Emperor, Eight of Pentacles, Six of Wands, Ten of Wands, Two of Wands, Four of Wands, Page of Wands, and Queen of Cups. So just right away with all of this Wands energy, this Fire energy, plus the, the Four of Wands, which is often seen as the 1111 card, this can indicate um, a twin flame that is your future spouse. So a reunion that might be happening, a 3D um, kind of unification between the both of you with this Eight of Pentacles um, after maybe a period of separation where a lot of work has been done on the internal level, on the personal level, um, kind of reconstructing both of your lives, building in a direction that is more in alignment um, with your authenticity, with that Six of Wands, with kind of building a life that excites you, um, sort of with the Ten of Wands, releasing any kind of burdens in terms of maybe living a life that fits others' expectations, um, any kind of tendencies toward codependency or sort of fear of love, um, any fears that were really kind of limiting the experience of joy between the both of you in the past. There's this indication of um, kind of addressing these things, kind of unshouldering those burdens, leaving those things behind. Um, with the Queen of Cups stepping more into that heart space, trusting in love, being in a place and a position to be able to to offer a cup of love that is full of integrity um, kind of this energy of reciprocity as well with the two of wands this choice being made um, to embark upon this path maybe the twin flame journey to really step onto that um, where you may, both may have been kind of at a distance from one another kind of um, walking the outskirts of each other's lives also on this sort of parallel path of healing within yourselves um, this is the energy of transcending that of kind of both of your paths intersecting um, with the 11, 11, this can also really talk, and Four of Wands, this can talk about seeing 11, 11 a lot, um, getting signs of this person's return to your life. This can also really talk about um, serendipity and kind of um, this very unplanned meeting between the two of you that is very much orchestrated by the divine, by your spirit guides with this page of wands here and this card of, um, you know, good news and this this very positive reemergence of this person in your life, um, that the changes that they have made, it's, you know, these are well-received changes. Seeing this person again, even if you were, you know, maybe having a little bit of hesitation you'd kind of moved on from this person you'd let go of the notion of this person that when they come back into your world into your existence um, you can't help but being overjoyed to see them the changes that they have made within themselves um, are just reflecting even from the auric level this person glowing from the inside out seeing you in a very positive light as well um, being very kind of awash with love for you any kind of um, difficulties or um, sort of indecision or hurt feelings of the past almost melting away instantaneously kind of that energy of somebody you reconnect with after a long period of time of not seeing them not talking and you're able to just pick up with this level of comfort and familiarity and this excitement to be in one another's presence once again with the emperor here this can definitely resonate if you are a divine feminine watching this reading this can indicate um, your divine masculine as your future spouse and that person having really transcended um, pride and ego that may have kept them at a distance from really experiencing and expressing uh, mutual and reciprocal love to you in, in, the, in this connection. This can indicate this person really healing some of those um, kind of deficits or distortions within themselves, learning to recognize vulnerability as a sign of strength as well. Um, somebody who has kind of evolved past um, just overly focusing on power and acquisitiveness, um, matters of the material world, and somebody who is really starting to value and um, 
place a lot of importance and and focus upon matters of the heart, um, upon fulfilling kind of and finding as well that that purpose. Somebody also with this two of wands who is very much in alignment with their purpose and that kind of being a precursor as well. This work that you have both um, internally done within yourselves to kind of reconcile the shadow, um, seek to know yourself, seek to discover your life's purpose, um, reconfigure your life and, and kind of change your trajectory in a way that you really feel that you are making a contribution, that you are kind of living in alignment with what um, you have set out to do in this lifetime. These dragonflies here too over the top of this um, canopy in the Four of Wands, um, dragonflies are also, they're a symbol of transformation, so this can really indicate um, kind of that energy of the early part of the dragonfly's life. Um, their nymph stage is about two years and they spend that um, sort of submerged in the water and then they go through that metamorphosis similar to a butterfly in which they you know, gain their wings and are able to then fly above and just kind of land and, and sit atop the water. So this really speaks to um, any kind of overwhelming or confusing or, or lack of um, emotional expression or emotional vulnerability of the past between you and this person, that being transcended, um, this connection ascending to a higher understanding and expression of love between the both of you to where feelings are not as overwhelming, some emotional wounds that you both may have been carrying around, these burdens of heartbreaks of the past, belief systems, beliefs on love and partnership, um, even kind of the, the hurt and the burden and the confusion that whatever had occurred between you and this person in the past that lingering with the both of you and you both seeking actively to kind of let these things go forgiveness of self forgiveness of others um, in order to kind of walk very unencumbered as we see here with um, this individual that's almost reminiscent of the fool um, with his little kind of stick and satchel there um, and you know kind of that energy of the new beginning embarking upon that new path taking only what is necessary the wisdom from difficulties of the past um, armed with the knowledge to do better and therefore um, making a different kind of progress or even easier progress on a journey um, this can also speak to kind of the spiritual enlightenment that has taken place and kind of the path forward being illuminated from on high. So in terms of signs with the Emperor, we have Aries. Pentacles is Earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. With the Wands, we have Fire, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And the Cups is Water, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. So I'm going to get some of these attribute cards now just to get some more clues about um, who this person is. There's initials, there's zodiac signs in here, there's um, attributes, personal qualities, just a little bit of everything. Okay, so we have merchant. So this person could kind of own their own business. Maybe they have started a spiritually based business. Um, somebody who also with that emperor card there is well respected in their field. Somebody who's very good at what they do, very successful um, in the earthly matters. And we also have the letter K. And we have April, so that could for some of you be a name. This can also relate to um, the month of April, kind of the, the season of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere, which would be autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. So sort of that energy of um, kind of transcending a, a phase of, of letting go, leading way to um, this period of rebirth, a rebirth of the connection between you and this person, um, kind of your paths crossing again once more, the two of you kind of meeting in this new energy with this discovery of self and this work that you've done on yourself really having been the seeds that were planted to a new beginning um, kind of a new experience with one another and for April this can also relate to the zodiacs of Taurus and Aries so also have soul connection so that can tie in also with twin flame or soulmate somebody that you've shared many lifetimes with somebody that um, you really before this incarnation you set out to kind of activate and trigger some wounds within each other that forced each other to do that kind of work within self um, kind of this this focus that has has really occurred to sort of healing the soul ascending the soul maybe even an understanding of spirituality and kind of the purpose of of your your soul in this current incarnation in this lifetime and we have long hair as an attribute 
business owners. So that ties in with merchant as well. Um, this could be a spiritually based business, some other type of business. This can really align with um, some changes that have occurred in your life. Maybe you have started a business or you've set out on your own in your particular field. And that can really be an indicator or a precursor kind of when that exterior event happens in your life, when you're really focused on work, focused on your own abundance, um, on building something, kind of giving birth to this idea or um, kind of the, the great work in whatever way that resonates for you in your life um, that is your focus is there and really you know raising your your vibration through this hard work and the success this victory energy of your efforts paying off um, that this can really be kind of around that time frame that this person intersects with you um, it also might be with the page of wands very happy to discover kind of a happy coincidence although there are no coincidences it can definitely speak to kind of this parallel path and journey that maybe this person has as well kind of taken some dream that they had been holding on to to or never quite acted upon and that they've done something with that. They and themselves have kind of established their autonomy, kind of freed themselves from the burden of working from other people or um, stuck in a job that didn't bring them much satisfaction and they've kind of realigned with their purpose. They've really set off and are experiencing a lot of success in that area. And we also have physics. So this could be something that they major in. Maybe this is somebody who's very science-minded, very logical-minded. Um, this is also really tying in for me with the, the concept of quantum entanglement and the two of your souls very much being entwined across lifetimes. This idea of parallel paths and sort of the work that um, you have done and, and are doing and will continue to do on, on yourself, that really having a ripple effect over vibrationally to this person to kind of encourage them to, to do that work of ascension on themselves as well. So definitely the two of you really supporting and, ch supporting and challenging each other on this journey of growth in this lifetime. And we have fastidious. So somebody who could be very kind of neat and tidy, um, well-groomed in their appearance. And this can also really tie in with this energy of somebody who has, um, and you as well, who's really sought to kind of clean your life up in some way to get things in order, to figure out what your purpose is, what you want out of life, what's the meaning of life, what are you here to do? And some kind of an organization has taken place, a plan has been set in motion as far as goals you would like to achieve and working diligently towards that. And we also have dark eyes as an attribute. Medium build as another attribute. Philanthropist. So you could both um, really be interested in social causes. Um, maybe this is in some way that you interact with this person. Um, is through your involvement in some kind of a, a social cause, giving back some kind of mentorship, um, maybe giving back to the collective, giving back to the community in the form of some kind of a spiritual based business um, that you are in, you know, individually or even kind of um, jointly sort of in tandem involved with. And we have the letter C. Petite, so that can be a physical attribute as well. Law enforcement, so this can be somebody who works in that field, maybe a police officer, a dispatcher, even an EMT, for example. Um, and this can also, this really, this card also kind of ties in for me with this um, idea of the law of attraction. Um, and so somebody who maybe really has stepped into a place in you as well of um, recognizing that you have an ability to co-create with the universe, really getting your, your mind in order, your thoughts in order, um, maintaining the vibration of that which you, you wish to experience and receive and having great success with that, great victory and triumph with kind of this realignment and um, kind of this clarity that comes with what you desire in life and taking the steps necessary in the material world to manifest that for yourself and then kind of seeing the fruits of that, reaping the benefits of that um, sort of self-discipline and kind of reprogramming of your um, idea of the nature of reality. And we also have Scorpio, so a zodiac sign, or this can tie in with the months of October and November.
Okay, and we have Brainy, so that can kind of tie in with the physics um, card that came out. Somebody who might work in kind of the sciences or in math, somebody who is very intelligent, somebody who definitely, um, when they set their mind to something, they can achieve anything. Um, and I feel that you very much occupy that same energy. And kind of when that realization has happened, um, when you really start to embody and understand that the, the saying of mind over matter is a very um, realistic uh, idea that is kind of the nature of, of how this 3D existence works, that our mindset, our vibration um, can then directly affect what we experience in the material world. And so kind of this effort being um, spent to really shift your mindset, shift your perspective, shift your expectation um, of what your life can be in this life. Um, goals that you may have deferred or, you know, things you may have not have pursued kind of being held back by failure, sort of transcending or fears of failure rather, or actual failure other times you may have um, endeavored these things, but shifting into this energy of trust and, and excitement, adventure, taking a chance, leading with hopefulness and, and trusting where it is you're being led, trusting that detours are even sources of great wisdom. All of this, this kind of um, reformatting of the structure of your mind and, and your intellect and the way in which you are viewing reality, all of this is kind of this recipe for this person sort of magnetizing to you. And we have the letter Z. generous so this can tie in with that energy of philanthropist somebody who gives of their time somebody who does um, kind of charity work or mentorship or really in some way feels compelled to give back to their community through maybe some kind of a spiritual business um, maybe some kind of a platform that they have where they discuss spirituality or you know their spiritual journey as well and this can really talk as also about um, with this generosity kind of this um, somebody who may have kind of had a difficulty with emotions a fear of emotional vulnerability, the shift happening where um, they are more comfortable in that space and are able to give more fully and tangibly to this connection than you may have experienced in the past. And we also have Law of Attraction, so I was referring to that with that Law Enforcement card, so double confirmation there for that. Um, you're definitely, you and this person, you're manifesting each other in um, consciously or even unconsciously just through changing your vibration, vibration shifting your focus, actively co-creating with the universe instead of um, just allowing yourself to be carried um, on the whims and currents of the reality around you. And we also have friend of the family. So that can be a connection to this person. Uh, maybe this is how you intersect with them again, if this is someone from your past kind of coming back around um, that, you know, they they might just by chance meet a family member of yours. Maybe you run into this person at a at a wedding or, or some kind of a gathering, some something where, um, you know, you're, you're with your family members or even with friends who feel like family. This doesn't have to be biological family. Kind of that energy of six degrees of separation that um, also this idea of kind of parallel paths that as much as your lives may have seemed to diverge you were never very far from each other um, in the material sense through you know your interpersonal connections and also vibrationally very much in tandem and we also have clever so that's kind of that energy of brainy somebody who has given a lot of thought to themselves to their motivation um, to kind of where they are in their life and who has really strategized maybe through a lot of obstacles with that that ten of wands a lot of burdens um, a lot of you know kind of circumstances that from the outside were really um, at odds with them not in their favor and somebody who has really strategized a way around these things kind of constructing a door or a window where others may have only seen a wall and and it's this kind of creative thinking, this quick thinking um, to kind of strategize and plan that has really um, created this drastic shift, kind of this collapse of several timelines or potential futures and outcomes um, simply through a shifting of the vibration and a reimagining of what is possible. And we also have August. So that could be a name for somebody or this could um, apply to the month of August or maybe as a significant time of year or even the zodiac signs of Leo and Virgo. So I'm going to go ahead and read the channeled love letter from your future spouse now, group two, and see what do they want to say from their higher self. So many aspects of me make sense through you. The mysteries of myself I had been searching to uncover suddenly became clear in purpose and intent on the day I met you. 
I am ceaselessly fascinated by you and all you have to teach me about the nature of love. You are so strong and so proud. Thank you for helping me to embody and realize these same aspects mirrored in me. You challenge me to stay awake to my own potential and to never give up on my quest to make both of our dreams come true. With you, the best version of me has room to unfurl. I feel accepted and seen without condition, utterly and true. You bring out the poet in me and a softer side that had no previous outlet. What a relief it is to have finally found you, my partner and my all. You make every closed door worth the wait to reach you. Your luminance and the beauty of your soul is a gift in my, in my life I could never replace. I would travel to the ends of the earth to replace even a moment of joy diminished from your face. Thank you for welp welcoming me home to your heart. So I'm going to close this reading for you, group two, with some initials. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it can spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Okay, so we have B, A, C, W, Z, Y, S, K, X, V, N, and Q. So those are your messages and that is your channeled love letter group two. I hope that the messages resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading or a personalized channeled love letter, I offer both through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you would like to check those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
Hi, group three. So this is your channeled love letter from your future spouse, and I will read that in just a minute. I'm going to start with some tarot to get some clues about who this person is. This can be somebody that um, is currently in your life, maybe that you're currently seeing, somebody from your past. Maybe this is somebody new, someone on the horizon who's coming in. So some clues about who this person is, the future spouse for group three. Okay, so we have the Six of Swords, Seven of Wands, Ace of Swords, Five of Pentacles, Three of Wands, Eight of Cups, The Lovers, and Ace of Pentacles. So it looks like this person comes into your life um, after a period of kind of being very jaded toward love um, with the Seven of Wands there and the Five of Pentacles. Maybe a series of heartbreaks or a very significant connection that came to an end um, that really had you kind of doubting um, your self-worth, your worthiness, um, if love was meant for you in this lifetime. Maybe somebody that you had really thought of as the one for you. Um, kind of the end-all be-all, sort of the, the storybook romance and some disappointments that happened with that, um, plans that went awry or um, just somebody who wasn't willing or able to participate in the connection in the long term or who kind of moved away, pulled away, um, sort of left you with the sense of being stranded, left you with all of this kind of intensity, all these emotions and chose to move in another direction and kind of the devastation that this caused, um, it may have really kind of plunged you into this energy of the dark night of the soul, um, really feeling that, you know, you questioning your worth and what you had to give, how lovable you were, um, really not knowing where to go from there, needing to almost rebuild your life from the ground up um, as a result of kind of these dreams and these hopes being thwarted by this person um, with this eight of cups here and all these kind of you know these spilled cups and and this indication of just needing to move on beyond that a lot of hurt feelings a lot of tears having been cried um, and that this person this future spouse comes in after this period of catharsis um, a period of deep healing that may have needed to take place within you also within kind of the um, the emotional level the mental level with the six of swords here needing to kind of um, gain some new perspective learning to really love yourself to heal yourself to forgive yourself for maybe um, ignoring some red flags that may have existed in this other connection that you just um, kind of turned away from you were very optimistic that love could kind of um, heal all of that I'm drawn here as well on this lover's card um, with the figure of the the god Aries this masculine energy um, and the goddess Venus or Aphrodite this this feminine energy Energy here and the masculine energy um, gender aside this can apply um, we all have masculine and feminine energies within us um, but this can really indicate somebody who um, this figure here is really shown in silhouette compared to this figure that is almost fully fleshed so you may have been dealing with somebody in the past that was kind of this in and out energy somebody who um, really had an issue with commit commitment fear of commitment um, 
something where you know you were more invested in the connection than this other person was kind of one foot in one foot out of the connection that could have really and again with this lover's energy someone that you viewed as a soulmate or even a twin flame and kind of the difficulties this person maybe this um, energy of the runner chaser and this defensiveness that this person had maybe suppressing their feelings pushing these feelings away denying these feelings um, that left you at just kind of a loss and this choice that you have then made um, to kind of cut some cords also with this ace of swords here um, to get to really to the truth and the heart of the matter that everyone has the free will ability um, to choose to get on an ascension path to choose to receive love from another to choose to do the healing work within oneself a choice has been made on your part to free yourself from limiting beliefs even cutting energetic cords with this other person or other disappointments in love maybe other um, a series of heartbreaks that have really just kind of left you feeling very desolate um, breaking away from some cycles or patterns within yourself as well that may have been repeating um, throughout romances or even just other connections in your life that maybe this person this twin flame or this soulmate really illuminated for you kind of kind of some of those shadowy aspects of self and making this choice to choose peace with that dove there to choose self to choose self-love um, freeing yourself from kind of the attachment to labels or, or a waiting a period of just kind of endless waiting for this person to um, kind of return to come back to you to figure things out instead you've then chosen to embark on a direction in, in, in a new in a new way kind of choosing yourself over um, just holding all the space and being the only one to put in the effort and the energy and show up for this other connection and that when that happens when you sort of free yourself from that um, it really opens you up energetically to this new opportunity coming in um, with the stag here on this card on this ace of pentacles that for me is an embodiment of kind of this this um awakened and ascended masculine energy kind of standing in this majestic power this nobility this sense of kind of control and self-assuredness this can really indicate this type of a partner coming in where you may have been dealing with people who are operating out of um, kind of these this energy of distortion previously kind of pushing away love suppressing their feelings somebody who you know was maybe breadcrumbing or you know was emotionally unavailable very closed off to this connection um, or to kind of um, deep commitment or kind of a deep expression and experience of love that when you make the choice to kind of open your heart to free yourself from that energy of of hoping that love is enough to change this person realizing that um, they had the free will ability to to change or not to change and you're choosing yourself that this opens the door to um, this new person um, to come in this can also for some of you be the energy of once you've released kind of the expectations you've let this person um, this twin flame or soulmate kind of go their own way you're choosing yourself you're choosing to embark in another direction um, you're kind of you're turning your back on this connection and setting your sights elsewhere that that can be the energy that um, really has then sparked this change this realization this epiphany within this person kind of realizing what they have um, once it's gone finding themselves on kind of the outside skirts of your life and that being sort of this spark or this catalyst for change within them and this can really also indicate um, in that instance where it's somebody who has chosen to do the work on themselves to kind of um, diminish the ways in which they were operating maybe out of pride and ego and lean more into that space of um, receptivity this softness um, this energy of kind of compassion and empathy there that when that change kind of takes place um, it really is it sparks the beginning of a new potential potential between the both of you this person really stepping into that higher version of self um, and through that personal transformation then that really setting the stage for the two of you to experience um, this partnership and this connection as it was always intended to be um, sort of this energy of the, these difficulties between the both of you maybe even some abandonment abandonment wounds that this person's action had really um, sparked within you that this was all for the purpose of you know choosing yourself facing those shadows healing that loving yourself um, despite what has happened or, or your conduct what you might have participated in um, and instead of kind of running from those wounds uh, this is sort of the energy of stepping into that you know the, as the saying goes you have to feel it to heal it and definitely again with this energy of catharsis and all these tears really taking the time to to not try to distract oneself or um, deflect these things kind of stuff them down or suppress 
them, but really this process of, of facing these wounds, transcending these wounds, um, that elevates you individually as a soul and vibrationally, but then also signals um, either the, the period of time that when this work is done on yourself, this can really hearken the time when this person has also done that work on themselves, and there's this potential for reunion kind of starting from square one with this person, starting all over again, um, meeting and experiencing them in a different way than you had before. This can also indicate um, a new partner, a more um, elevated and ascended partner who has done the work within themselves, who is able to meet you at that higher vibration, um, is not operating out of this energy of distortion and kind of denial that this other person may have in the past. So in terms of signs with the swords, we have air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Wands is fire energy, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. With the cups, we have water energy, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. Pentacles is earth, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. And the lovers is Gemini. So I'm going to get some of these attribute cards now, and this can be physical characteristics, maybe some zodiac signs, initials, just a little bit of everything in here. Let's get some clues about your future spouse, group three. Okay, so we have Aquarius, so that could be a significant zodiac sign, or this can relate to the months of January and February as significant to this connection. And we also have heart-shaped face as an attribute. And that really is also reminding me of kind of somebody who is um, wearing their heart on their sleeve and maybe some healing that you needed to do as well or this journey that you've gone through to establish some better boundaries for yourself. Um, you may find yourself or historically to have been kind of an overgiver. You may have had a tendency to kind of um, encounter some narcissistic people or very one-sided relationships, kind of a lack of reciprocity in your connections. And by healing that, um, by learning to kind of self-protect and um, love yourself by establishing again those kind of boundaries or those gatekeepers, um, those expectations, setting those those firm boundaries, drawing those lines in the sand, and, and not tolerating any less than than you know what you know you are worthy of and and deserving of experiencing. That all of that prioritizing yourself and your own kind of emotional well being. That all of this really signals that shift when this this partner, perhaps even this new person, this future spouse, is unable to come into your life as you've raised your your vibration and elevated then you are um, a match for an elevated partner, a counterpart. And we have vacation. So this can indicate um, if this is someone from your past, kind of some time that you've taken away from each other, from this connection, growth and development that has happened, perspective that has um, really occurred. Or this can indicate um, somebody, even a new person, that you've taken a vacation from love. You've kind of taken um, a rest, some kind of reprieve from relationships to really focus on yourself, on your healing journey. Um, that this person comes in also as kind of a very relaxing presence, a very peaceful presence where you may have been used to kind of chaotic energy or you know just a lot of turmoil in your in your love life this can indicate um, a connection a, a marriage which is um, or even a, a long-term partnership which is you know one that is kind of um, embodied in an energy of peace and, and a source of tranquility as opposed to stress this can also be somebody um, that you meet while you are on vacation somewhere or maybe they are on vacation in your location in your city town state or country um, just take that as it resonates and we have pale, fair complexion as an attribute. Movies. So this person could somehow work in the film industry, be kind of a movie buff. Um, the two of you could really enjoy some kind of quiet time together, Netflix and chill. Um, just enjoying those sort of that tranquility, that peaceful time, that quality one-on-one -on -one time together. Um, you could have movies in common. Maybe you meet this person when you are out at the movies, for example. And we have clerk. So this can be somebody who works as a clerk in an office, maybe some kind of a, a legal clerk. Um, this could be something that you are working toward, working toward getting some kind of degree or cert certificate for. Um, sort of that energy of, of rebuilding your life, maybe moving in a different direction in terms of your career. Um, and so kind of when that shift happens or maybe a new job that you take on um, in that field, in that capacity, that that can really kind of be this prelude to when this person will enter your life. And we also have July, so that can be a significant month, or this can pertain to the zodiac signs of Cancer and Leo. And we've got text. 
So a lot of texts back and forth with this person. If this is even someone from your past, you may um, kind of get some kind of an apology text, some kind of offer of reconciliation or somebody who tries to kind of knock on that door um, to kind of re-enter your life. This can also indicate someone who lives at a distance from you, a geographic distance um, to where a lot of the getting to know you process or at a certain period in your relationship, a lot of that is taking place virtually. And we also have hobby. So you and this person could share some kind of hobby together. Um, this also really ties in with that energy of peace and relaxation, something that you're doing um, for fun, for enjoyment, really that energy of investing in yourself and investing in, you know, just being tender and compassionate with yourself as you're healing from um, some heartbreak and disappointment. And we have quiet. So this person could be kind of quiet, kind of soft spoken, um, very gentle and peaceful in their demeanor. And this also really kind of operates as a as a contrast and maybe some energy of confusion and chaos that you were used to dealing with um, in love and relationships of the past that this really this person helps to quiet a lot of your fears, quiet your mind. And um, it's a relationship where there's a lot of harmony between the both of you as opposed to the chaos you may have been used to. We've got the letter E. Corporate. So this person could work in some kind of a corporate environment. They could um, run a corporation. They could have started a corporation. Um, maybe this ties in with that clerk card and, and some kind of a, a job you get in that capacity. And you could meet this person through work, through a new endeavor. Either they are, you know, the head of that corporation, a boss or a manager or a coworker. They're in a similar field as you. And we've got the letter T. Manifestation. So definitely this speaks to the two of you really manifesting each other. If this is someone from your past, the work that you have done in yourself and are doing on yourself, it's really encouraging this person energetically to kind of make those changes within themselves, to step into that higher version of self so that you can both manifest an opportunity to meet each other at more equal ground and, you know, in an energy that is more um, full of reciprocity and appreciation. This can also really talk about the work that you've done in yourself to kind of cut the cords of attachment and expectations and belief systems, mindsets, um, kind of self-image even, or lifestyle choices, just any number of things that you really have sought to kind of move away from and really kind of redirecting your focus, not so much on ruminating or lamenting the past, but very forward thinking. What do you want to create moving forward? Closing those doors to the past, kind of letting things go with love, forgiving others, forgiving yourself, um, even just internally to unburden yourself. And by doing that, by kind of shifting that vibration and actively doing that work within yourself, that healing work, um, that ascension work, that self-love work that it helps to manifest in um, through the raising of your own vibration, a partner that is of a compatible vibration and is able to kind of give and provide and receive the type of love you are desiring and that you have to offer. So we also have ascension. So that really then ties in with that raising the vibration. This could be somebody on the ascension path, um, somebody who is spiritually awakened, um, someone who has done that work on themselves. And this this future spouse, it definitely represents um, a higher level of love than you have been used to experiencing in the past. If this is somebody new, this partner will be very different um, in a lot of different ways, spiritually, energetically, um, maybe even in terms of their characteristics or um, you know, what you have previously thought of as your type, um, really stepping away from that, kind of moving beyond that, exploring some new terrain, and they could be very um, outside of the ordinary for who you would normally consider in terms of partnership or that you'd be attracted to. Um, but there are these intangible qualities of this person beyond almost like the, the physical characteristics or some of those kind of surface level details um, that really help to make abundantly clear um, the higher vibration of this person, kind of the joy that they are capable of offering to you, kind of this truth and clarity that maybe even the type of person that you were gravitating toward or were kind of drawing into your experience previously might not have been the best for you, was really kind of magnetized in as a result of some wounds that you were um, sort of suppressing or not dealing with, um, distortions that you were operating from that were really kind of bringing in partners or, or romantic par you know people that kind of mirrored that or reflected that in some way. And so when you kind of break out of that pattern and that habit and cycle within yourself, that Ace of Swords get very, you know, clear and honest about um, 
kind of what ways have you sort of contributed to or enabled some circumstances in your life where you've allowed kind of that energy and that saying of we teach people how to treat us, that when you raise that standard, um, you know, you, you take yourself out of the discount bin and you put yourself in the glass case where you belong, that kind of a thing, when you, you really are valuing yourself and re realizing your worth, recognizing your worth and, you know, setting those firm boundaries and, and expectations and following through with that and how people treat you and who you let into your life, um, that when you do that, when you actively are engaged in that process of self-love, um, then you are able to then experience and receive kind of the, the elevated vibration of others. Um, you're able to receive partners and people who are a reflection of that, of that, that kind of self-worth, that sense of self and kind of cherishing of self. And we have mentors, so this can indicate somebody who might be older than you, maybe somebody who has a depth of knowledge or even spiritual wisdom, um, where you can both teach each other a lot, I'm feeling, about love, maybe about particular things. Um, that you're interested in, maybe spirituality in general. This person can also be somebody who is very giving. Maybe they they mentor people or they have in, are involved with some kind of a community outreach. This could be the ways in which you, you intersect with this person as you are getting involved in that as well, kind of giving back to others. And we have picnics, so time, quiet time spent outdoors, kind of the simple pleasures um, that the two of you may enjoy. There could be a nature connection there or kind of your idea of a vacation together might not be um, necessarily going to a resort or um, sort of a, you know, a big city or, or a lot of excitement, but it might just be quiet time spent out in nature, kind of away from the hustle and bustle. And we have salt and pepper hair, so another attribute there. And we've got gifted. So this person could be, um, you know, have a particular talent or a skill, something that with that mentor card, they teach others. Um, they could be kind of a, a gifted orator, somebody who is very um, empathic, somebody who is able to kind of read energy or has really um, worked on some kind of a particular skill or is really. Um, making the most of their spiritual gifts and their endowments in this lifetime to help others to to really um, you know has this gift of, of kind of doing that work within themselves has become quite astute at that somebody who's not new to this ascension path um, but somebody who has achieved a lot of progress in that sense um, has this ability to kind of recognize residual traumas as they creep up kind of layers of the shadow work as, that's necessary that kind of reemerge for for reconsideration or evaluation at different points in time and somebody who is really able to um, and interested in kind of keeping abreast of that, keeping very much in alignment with that, staying on top of that um, to make sure that they keep their vibration high and, and making sure that they, you know, surround themselves with an environment of those who are able to kind of mirror that vibration and kind of meet that expectation. And we have childhood, so this could be somebody from your past, somebody that you kind of dated when you were younger, that you used to see when you were younger, that maybe you run into them very kind of serendipitously at a future point in time. This can also indicate, um, you know, a soulmate or even a twin flame from kind of your past where the Im the energy between the both of you is kind of operating out of distortion, out of this, this immaturity. But then through time and through kind of the work that's done on oneself and, and on each other through this ascension journey, um, you're able to then meet each other at this more mature energy energy, um, kind of leaving behind also the, the sort of the wounds of the past between the both of you to step into kind of a new experience with one another. This can also really tie into somebody who, um, you know, has kind of this zest for life, kind of this beginner's mind, somebody who's very curious, um, very optimistic, and, you know, just really tries to make the most out of each day. And we have family, so you could know this person through your family, you could know their family, there could be some connection in that sense. Um, this person could be divorced, you could be divorced, so it could be kind of like a blending of families, or this can indicate that this is somebody that you will start a family with, whether that is a, a family of biological children, adopted children, maybe um, you know pets as family, friends as family, even plants, wildlife, anything that can be considered family. And we've got nature, so speaking of wildlife and also that energy of picnic um, you both could enjoy spending time in nature. You could do something in a professional capacity that has you both outdoors or um, that this is kind of an ideal place to sort of um, recharge your batteries. 
could be very conscientious about nature as well, maybe involved in some kind of um, conservation efforts or environmentalism. And this can also really talk about a very compatible nature between the both of you. Kind of with that energy and the lovers here, this concept of sort of the yin yang, balancing each other out, um, that where you may have been used to almost this energy of being like oil and water with partners of the past, where there was a lot of conflict, there was a lot of um, friction that occurred or, or kind of dissonance that occurred between the both of you. Um, that this person, this future spouse represents somebody who um, very much you complement one another. Things are very peaceful between the both of you. There's a symbiosis. You're able to really flow and take the time to understand and appreciate and respect one another's nature, um, kind of boundaries, what you've been through, um, sort of how that has shaped who you are and really also very much in alignment with what you see for your life going forward. And we also have physics. So this could be somebody who majors in physics, works in physics. Um, maybe that ties in with the nature connection. So somebody, something that they're doing outdoors that is in kind of the, the scientific realm as well. And this also with physics kind of fits in with me with law of attraction, kind of that energy of manifestation where kind of the shift within self, the shift in the mindset, the work that has been done within self, um, shifting both of your vibration to kind of magnetize each other in, to kind of pull each other in, aligning with each other so that your polarities very well balanced and matched are able to um, kind of seamlessly come together in a very peaceful and um, well suited way. So I'm going to read the channeled love letter from your future spouse's higher self now, group three, and let's see what do they have to say. You have helped me to close the door to my past and to realize I don't have to live there anymore. No one has ever looked at me with such knowing and trust before. Your heart I will cherish and will defend. I will never stop striving to show up as a more evolved version of who you know. You inspire me to dream beyond borders. With and through you, everything seems possible. I want to explore the world with you. I want to explore the depths of love. I promise to push my way past fears and limitations so that you can recognize me there, growing right beside you. There is such a familiarity to you. I could spend a lifetime exploring the sameness of our souls and this uncanny recognition of you from some time, from some place else. Thank you for being my living fairy tale, the triumph and culmination of my heart's journey in this life. The fire between us is unquenchable. Thank you for igniting such intensity in my life. So I'm going to close this reading for you now, group three, with some initials. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it can spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. All right, so we have C, H, Q, O, a, K, Z, F, L, R, B, N, W, and D. So those are your messages and that is your channeled love letter group three. I hope that the messages resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading or a personalized channeled love letter, I offer both through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.